Hello, hello, good afternoon. Happy, happy Wednesday. Very glad that you're here with me today. Yeah, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library. I teach the, the library, Columbia County Library in Evans, Harlem, and also in our new building in Grovetown, yay. Right now, of course, we're staying safe and at home and everything, so of course, we're only doing virtual classes right now, so hopefully we'll have uh, classes uh, in the future. Of course, we will. Uh, but right now, we're doing all our virtual classes, all our classes virtually right now and stuff. Uh, so I'm very glad that you're here with me today. Do you realize to post uh, any kind of comments in the chat or anything, you do need to be logged into YouTube to be able to post or also hit subscribe, uh, our library page here. You also need to be logged in as well. So welcome, welcome. Today we're going to cover our birding class. Yay! <laughs> it's a big class that gets uh, requested a lot. And uh, last month we didn't do it at all. And uh, so I'm very glad that we have it uh, today. Now, let me go ahead and tell you about uh, the big question I always ask is, uh, how can I help? So definitely feel free to post any questions in the chat or anything. Looks like, uh, hey Mac, how are you? I've had that issue too. Had a little bit of where YouTube uh, keeps kicking me out for some reason. Not as far as um, recording the video, but I, I just looking at the video on my uh, phone. Uh, I think they're having some issues today. A few video of, uh, videos I've watched have had that problem. So I'm sorry. Keep trying. Maybe it'll get better, <laughs> but you're not alone. Uh, I've had that issue too. Okay, so. Tuesday, we did our Scratch and Python class, uh, Blocks Decoding. That video should still be up available here on our YouTube channel. And then we did that class again this morning for the Harlem Library, um, and it was actually great. I do recommend seeing the second one because, you know, doing the class for the first time and then doing it for the second time, you learn new things, and, of course, we make little changes and stuff and updates. And, of course, we're doing our birding class this afternoon. Yay! Now tomorrow we're actually doing a double feature class. We're doing library resources and apps in the morning and afternoon. So the guy would give plenty of time for anybody to be able to come in the morning or in the afternoon for Grovetown Library and then the, of course, the Columbia County Library in Evans. And I'll be posting links to each uh, library's Facebook page, but also all our videos will be here on our YouTube channel. Okay. So if you subscribe to this channel, get the alert that when we become live or post a new video, you'll know everything. Here's our schedule for our classes for the month. And uh, you'll see next week we're actually going to be doing Google School, Google Suite, eBay, and Facebook Marketplace. Can I 
uh, social distance and do Facebook Marketplace and uh, of course eBay shipping stuff but yes you can uh, we'll talk about porch pickups safety all that kind of good stuff and then we're gonna be doing a new class on the 12th at 11 o'clock video creating basics using the the Windows 10 uh, photos app to edit a video and stuff and I, hopefully I'll work out and get some videos that we can do some editing too and kind of like make little movies and just do a, like a video editing like a um, slideshow too. I also do realize our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Uh, curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details. Of course, you can call the library for with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please give my videos a like as well. Uh, you're currently watching our YouTube channel. If you want to find our YouTube channel in the future, the easiest way to find it is GCHRL videos and just search for that. Okay. And I'm back. And guess who else is here with me? That's right. It's the bald eagle is with me today. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? I'm glad, very glad that you're here today. And we're going to be covering so many great topics about my beautiful species. Didn't see my li lips move once, did you? Okay, so usually what we do is usually we do a, uh, this is this is like a, uh, in, oh, excuse me. <laughs> this is like, um, it's a program that we do half of it inside and then we would do the other half outside and walk around the library and find birds and then usually someone says well that's great do you see birds and it's like yes we always see birds when we go outside <laughs> and look for birds so the let me go ahead and pull that up and i'll actually post it in the the thing as well let me make sure let's see yeah okay so Yay! And then we have a second part to our class today. We're actually be doing uh, backyard birding as well. So, yay! And then I've got some videos to show, uh, basically about doing backyard <laughs> backyard birding, uh, spotting the birds and everything, the merc on eagle, and uh, we'll be talking about that feeding birds and all that. So let's go ahead and we're going to get started. Uh, anybody have any questions before we get started? Mm, okay, so if it keeps kicking you out, I do know the, vi vi the video of course will be available later. And look, YouTube just kicked me out again for some reason. I've been having it where the screen uh, just goes black for some reason, but uh, I don't know. Maybe the, the YouTube app is updated and now they're having problems. But of course the video will be available for later and keep trying. <laughs> I feel like it's one of those uh, things where someone's trying to call in and uh, someone says the phone lines are busy, just keep trying. All right, so let me ask you this. Uh, who has been bird watching before, okay? Uh, what are your interests? Uh, tell me kind of what questions you have. So I can kind of start with that and then we can know, uh, you know what you want to learn today, of course. I'll be covering, of course, I got the handout. I'll be covering lots of topics. And of course, the ones that are, um, the big one is you can ask questions, add stuff, because if you come to a live class, then I can do that, okay? So I'm gonna disappear, and Mr. Bald Eagle will disappear too. Goodbye, I will see everyone later, okay. All right, so starting off with birding, okay. Uh, 47 million birders are in the U.S. It's a no better time than the present to take a plunge or at least dip your toe in, okay. It's recommended gear, so having some binoculars, a.k.a. bins, okay. Uh, the, the field guide, have a nice field guide going on. One of those that, um, of course, you have your normal ones. I'll be talking about the birding app as well. One of the ones I have a little bit of a, it's actually one that I got at a state park. I'm trying to remember which state park I got this at, but it's just for Georgia specifically. One really th good thing I like about it is it's laminated. 
and we talk about the different birds I'll show that off a little bit later uh, very cheap I think it was five dollars then it folds out and I can see most of the birds in the location so if I was on like vacation somewhere and of course I'd have my uh, nicer book uh, but you know if I was an area that I'm not too familiar with just having something small little pocket um, device like that not device small little pocket uh, guide there would be really helpful okay so we have the birding app which we're going to talk about which is free now the Audubon birding app we're going to talk about weather weatherproof uh, notebooks okay oh, yeah so if you want to take a notebook and also I wanted to add if you are doing the birding app just like in the geocaching class of course the Munsey class a big recommendation is to get an extra battery hate to be out there and you're stranded because your battery died because you're using the field guide or you are using you know some kind of map geolocation um, or something and uh, you're stuck why you're stuck why because your battery died on your cell phone okay uh, the big question is how to identify birds can every bird be identified hmm no not even by experts uh, what is most important when we're bird watching is to actually look at the bird there's plenty of time later consult our field guide okay so a big one here is looking at the birds trying to identify the birds hold off get a really good look at their movement we'll talk about the silhouette a lot and you'll if you heard me and I, I couldn't really couldn't tell what a bird was I go well this its silhouette looks like something and we'll talk about that in a minute and like I said we're gonna talk about the backyard birdings and stuff too so here's Wiley Coyote trying to spot a bird and that's by National Geographic's field guide too so identifying birds sounds like it needs a special effect doesn't it so birds are grouped into main visual cat many main visual categories now some of this uh, some people would say is just kind of common knowledge when you actually talk to other people not even having to be some birding expert or anything you kind of I uh, can identify what type of bird it is and that's a good place to start is it a gull bird does it look like a seagull you've grown up going to the beach and you look over and there's a bird there and like well that's a seagull so you can probably excuse me you can probably go ahead and tell and say hey look over there's a seagull what about a hawk okay you can probably identify um, that looks kind of like a hawk over there uh, then we can use an identifier to get more specific about what kind of bird is it okay is it an upright perching water bird? Uh, you can probably identify, um, identify, identify an owl. Okay, uh, you can probably identify a long neck, a long legged waddler, like a crane or something. Okay, trying to use just normal words that people would say. Is it a tree clinging bird? Uh, is it a duck? Most of us can say, well, that's a duck. Okay, by the way they look. Uh, hummingbirds are not going to be uh, confused with the hawk okay hummingbirds are not going to be confused with a um, an eagle or anything like that so the big one is to realize that you probably already have a lot of knowledge about kind of identifying birds to begin with okay uh, hummingbirds little sandpiper birds kind of birds you kind of see at the beach a pigeon okay a dove a chicken you're not going to miss a, a see a chicken and go, oh no I don't know what it is a swallow so you already kind of have a general idea of what a bird what type of bird it is okay but we want to get a little bit more specific I can actually hear the birds chirping outside you may hear them every once in a while so let's use our observation skills okay what is its shape okay is it plump like a starling is it slender like a cuckoo, cuckoo. okay uh, how is it standing 
What is the bird size? And this picture is directly from the Audubon app. Okay. What is the bird size? Uh, the size can be tricky to judge. You never know how far away a bird is or how big that nearby rock or tree limb is. Okay. I've seen many herons that don't look very big and then either they fly near you and you're like, wow, that is a very tall animal. Uh, fluffed up or it's hunkered down birds. It's easy to get fooled about how big they are. So in the Audubon app, this is when you say size, this is the different options you get. And I think it's an excellent um, idea of how to get started um, before identifying a bird, okay? How big is it? Is it larger or smaller than a sparrow? We need to compare our mystery birds to other birds, okay? Try to narrow it down to two small species, a downy hairy woodpeckers, shape shinned and Cooper's hawk, okay? And of course, is it dancing? Is it also singing um, with other birds as well? And we can use that to help identify what type of bird it is. Now, let's talk about uh, becoming familiar with silhouettes, okay? Silhouettes quickly tell us what? The bird's size. The proportions, the posture, quickly rules out many groups of birds, okay? So let's look to our right here. So the silhouette's a big one because we don't want to get sidetracked with a bunch of bright colors. Uh, some species, basically they have the same silhouette, same kind of shape, same size, but then they're different. The male and female are different colors. The juvenile, juveniles, uh, different colors. So do realize that, don't be fooled. So, um, yeah, so look at the different colors, learn the silhouettes, you're more likely to be able to ID the bird. So here we are as a heron. Now, does that make a little more sense? Even though I can actually see the, the color of the, the, the feathers and everything, when I look at the silhouette of the bird, I can actually realize, identify the bird a little bit better just by not even pointing at the plumage or anything. And below here is a barn swallow, okay? Uh, looking at its tail, which we're going to talk about that in just a second. All right, let's talk more about its size, okay? Trying to compare it to other, other known birds. We have our unknown bird uh, with a familiar one size, a yellow and black finch, okay? Is it, if it's smaller than a house sparrow, it probably is an American finch. Okay. Evening grosbeak. Look familiar, but are almost the size of a robin. Okay. So those two look similar, but the American robin is much larger. Okay. It's a pretty bird. Pretty bird, pretty bird. All right, let's talk about wings. Not the 80s band. Um, but what shapes are its wings? Are they rounded like a quail? And I believe this is one of those, kind of like an owl, almost unmistakable. You see a quail, you're like, that's a quail, okay? So most of the time we can actually guess what the bird is, just by kind of common knowledge. And of course, we want to get more specific. Um, does it have pointy uh, brown wings? Okay, see how curved these are in flight? Okay, pointy right here, pointed wings. You can really point out that this is a swallow, barn swallow specifically, its tail. Ah! Ah! Didn't know the owl's coming, did you? Okay, good. 
Just try to surprise you a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's talk about our observation of our bill. Now, this is pictures directly taken from one of the uh, one of the books, and the one that I thought really uh, showed this the best. Okay, what sh shape is its bill? Okay. Now, a big thing is to know about what they like to eat. And we'll talk about some of our bike backyard birds, what's a good type of seed to put out um, so that you'll get most of the birds that you're interested in. Okay. We'll talk about that later small and phi <laughs> like a warbler stout and short like a seed crackling sparrow dagger shaped like a turn uh, hook tips like a, a bird of prey so let's look at here so here's our robin what does the robin like to eat what does the robin eat d d d d d d d Worms and fruit, so that's the kind of bill that it has. A little mountain chickadee has a tiny insects, likes tiny insect seeds, so it has a small little bill. Here's our house finch, okay, likes seeds and he likes caterpillars, so his mouth's a little bit uh, bigger. This one here is a big one, okay. Dew witcher. He likes worms from deep mud, so he has a very long bill. Right here, it has kind of a curved nose going on here. Small shrimp in water. Here's our blue heron fish, so it kind of can poke a fish too, but it also can suck them up real good. Uh, think about a pelican, okay, with that really unique. Uh, beak so it can actually scoop up birds when it flies. Let's look at this one here. Marine mollusks. And here's one that's almost non unmistakable. Uh, Golden eagle. Okay, has the hook nose. Why is that? To rip meat. That's why that's there. To rip meat. Now, some of these birds, you may kind of notice that their eyes, and this actually is a good thing in nature in general to realize is that if the eyes are on the sides of the head, not more in the front, uh, it may be an animal that is predator or prey. A prey is more likely to have the eyes on the sides, okay? So they can look around um, everywhere to see if something's coming to get them, and a predator would actually need eyes in the front, okay? So here's our hawk with eyes in the front. Here's a duck with a little bit more on the sides even. This one is kind of doing that, but there you go right there. Let's talk about field markings. Now these are not uh, parts that you need to absolutely remember, okay? But if you are reading a description, if you're reading in one of the books and it says, you know, uh, take note of the, the bird's side or its leg or the throat or anything or the nape of its head, so this kind of goes into getting more specific about that. A lot of the guides may not even have um, a section like this because it may not give that much detail. Talked about the wing the wing bars on the wings, maybe different colored. Okay. Let's talk about our tail. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's talk about our tail a little bit. Is it rounded like a blue jay? Saw two blue jays this morning at the bird feeder. Okay. Two blue jays. Uh, rounded tail. Okay. Kind of rounded. So we think about a blue jay. This also is from the Audubon Society app. Okay. Square tipped like a cliff swallow. That's square tip. Let's see, notched. Now, 
notch like a tree swallow? Okay. Is it fort like a barn swallow? So we got our fort shape. This is like the bird we saw earlier. Very recognizable, especially when the bird's sitting still or he's, or he's flying over. Pretty much doing anything, he kind of points at um, the tail being pointed like that. It's interesting. Pointed like a morning dove. Okay. This down here. So let's look at some of the ones over here on the left side. Okay. So let's look at this. So we kind of have it pointed, don't we? Forked, excuse me. Forked. So I definitely say that's a forked tail. What about this one here? Let's see. It's mostly flat. I don't know if it's short. Could be rounded a little bit. Okay. I'm going to kind of go with it's more of a square tail. Okay. So it could be one of the long one. Or it could be, ah, it might be a short one because it kind of flails out a little bit. It's possible. All right, what about number three? Ooh, it has a notch in it, doesn't it? So that's notched for sure. What about number five? It's pointed. So there's your pointed one, okay? So that's really your main tail types. All right, another one is how does it move? Okay, how does it move? Does it move its tail like a wren? Hold it down like a flycatcher? If you listen carefully, you might actually hear a bird call. Because I have a few out there talking uh, to me in, in the window. Uh, it wags, flip, dip. Now this one's a big one. Does it climb trees? Okay. Does it grasp the tree? Is it flying from one place to another? This is a big one that you see woodpeckers do is they actually grasp the tree, walk around on a tree. They're not really flying. They'll, they'll, of course they will, but their main, I don't know if I'll, I'll say it a different way. The other birds that are not woodpeckers or may not climb on the tree as much as a woodpecker will. Okay, so it has the proper claws to be able to brace itself. Is it, you know, going head first? Uh, so is it climbing up the tree or is it kind of leaping from, from branch to branch? Might tell you more it's like a woodpecker type if it's grasping the tree. Ah. And our American Eagle would like to come and make a statement. Yes, as you can see, I'm flying gracefully there in the video that has been listed. And thank you so much, Alex, for showing that video. Oh, you're absolutely, you're absolutely more than welcome. Okay, so we have, how does it, how's its flight, okay? Does it swoop up and down, okay? Does it kind of flap? Does it soar, okay? So we have our bald eagle here and it definitely is soaring around, isn't it, okay? Does it hover? Now I will tell you this, if you are, if you see really, really big birds and they may look similar to like a hawk or they may look similar to uh, an eagle, not the bald eagle, and they're flying really, really, really high up, it's more likely that those are basically buzzards, okay? So they do have a job, nature has given them a job and nature has given them protection uh, to be able to do their job and not get sick, okay? which I won't go into that, Ugh. but they do have a job, okay? They're important. Um, so they fly really, really, really high up. They soar a lot, 
and you will see people say, oh, look, there's a hawk. And if it's really high up, it's probably a buzzard or like a vulture, okay? Uh, oh, the one thing is if it's like a hummingbird, you know, hummingbirds are uh, doing their, their wings as fast as possible, okay? So one thing about that is you can usually tell what hummingbird is because its wings are, when it's flying, are so fast. All right, so we have our little duck butt sticking up in the air. <laughs> uh, does it swim? Okay, uh, believe it or not, I'll ask people, do ducks swim underwater? You know, do they swim underwater? And a lot of people say, no, ducks don't swim underwater. You know, I see ducks on top of the water. Well, there are different kinds, and there's some that bob, like sticking their little butt up in the air, okay? And then there's also ones that actually will swim underwater to be able to get food that they're interested in, okay? I'm sorry if the video keeps cutting off. Uh, just keep trying. Apparently YouTube is having some issues uh, with some of its uh, websites for some reason. But I'm actually getting a very clear, excellent connection with YouTube, so like I said, it probably it will be available later uh, to be able to view the video if you're still having some problems okay okay so uh, so we have our ducks how does it swim if it does swim if it's just on top so here's a big one this is our range a lot of our books will have this um, even getting a field guide that says certain areas your state you know what region you're in southeastern uh, so you see a bird you go I think that's uh, the bird that I'm looking for or excuse me I think I know what bird that is by looking in my book and then you look in your book and you're like I'm not sure it's like well you may actually find out that there may not be in that range it may even be a bird that you think it is in another country that is why it is important to get a field guide or of course use an app uh, that either knows your look is, is made for your location or the app knows your location okay so a lot of birds uh, withdraw in winter from northern areas with many migrating as far as uh, north as South America rarely straggles um, uh, fair inland okay so we got a little video and you see it just kind of this is just kind of general bird migration okay and our little thing says birds really do tie the world together so right now we'll see birds that we don't normally see and then of course when it's really cold in the winter uh, you may see less birds and they may have actually migrated uh, south uh, during the winter and then come up north during the summer so it's not as hot okay I hope you like that I think it's a really good illustration uh, probably a lot of these up here like the what we call Canadian geese or geese when you're in Canada you just call them geese All right, so here we go. We're getting close to the end of our first part of our class. So let's spotting the difference and let's see if anybody can actually reply to me. I know we've had some issues with the YouTube. So can you spot the difference? So look at these pictures right there. Now, depending on what your app is, of course, uh, the one on the left is seagull and the one on the right is a seagull as well or gull okay so let's talk about see if we can spot the differences okay so let's look at their tail it's kind of pointed yeah it's pointed the plumage is kind of gray in this area look at their head it's white. How about their beak? Oh, the beak's kind of yellowish and it has a red dot on it. Okay. 
Let's keep looking around. This one is kind of on a rock. This one's the sand, so that really may not matter. Now let's look at their legs, okay? This one's legs are what? Have you found it already? The big difference is the leg color, okay? So one's leg is kind of pink or peach. The other legs are kind of like a light yellow. Um, trying to think about another color similar to yellow. <laughs> I can't really think of one. But anyway, uh, kind of like yellow legs. So let's go ahead and let's find out. Are these the same species? This is a western gull and this is a California gull, okay? So they are, but they are two different birds, okay? Two different birds just because of the legs and of course, um, of course their location too, but they are two different birds. All right, let's see if we can name this bird. I uh, think it looks a little bit like a gull, doesn't it? It's got a beak. It's grayish though. It does have the pointed tail. Okay, the head's grayish. The beak is black. Uh, Let's look at this. Okay, so the tail's pointed and it's brown. It's kind of brown and white. Very different colors. Brown and white. And it looks like it has like a ring around its eye and brown. Oh, this one's really brown. That one's kind of brownish gray. This one has almost no gray in it that it looks like. And its feet look a little brown too. And it's kind of white outline of the feathers. Oh, this one looks completely different. So its whole head is black. Neck is white. This is grayish, but not a dark gray and then a pointed tail. Okay. So which which uh, birds do you what birds do you think these are? Okay, well, what if I told you they're all the same bird? <laughs> so one important thing to note is that birds can look different depending on their age and, of course, depending on their sex as well, male or female. So our laughing gull, if we go back, we have ones that are kind of, you know, lightly brown. like this, and then we have our laughing gulls here, that's the juvenile, the youngster is all brown, first winter, so that would be this one, first winter, I believe, second winter, a little bit more like that, and then our adult breeding is like this. So. This really is one of those things that they're trying to show their, their feathers tell what their age is, doesn't it? Okay. So it's important if you do get a book, make sure it has more than one drawing. Okay. And I actually have a new video to show uh, in a little bit that came on the Sunday show. And I think you'll enjoy it. It's just a few minutes long and also I'll include in some other videos to show as well. So let's go ahead and let's talk about our Audubon app. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up.
video on my hmm it's an interesting fact because it feels like when you're looking for something and you're teaching online it seems like time is a lot shorter and let's see okay well I don't have that video because I was showing you how to, we use the Audubon app <laughs> So I'll just show it by hand then. So basically go to the app store and you download the Audubon app. Whoop. Download the Audubon app. And I'm gonna go to open mine up. If we look on here, it's this one right here. It says Audubon. <laughs> and it actually comes up like this. Whoop. A big thing to do is to go ahead and it has a field guide. So if you kind of know the names, it'll kind of scroll through it like that. Give me, give me one second. Let me see if I can find the the video the the example there Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to move on. Um, I can't easily show. Aha! <laughs> I got it. And I was about to give up on it, too. How about that? Okay, so this is just a quick little short video that I shot to kind of talk about um, using the Audubon app. So, of course, we start the Audubon app. We come up and we need to uh, we have some options here we can choose size color birding type so I'm gonna choose size and I can choose sparrow and it shows me some nice pictures at the bottom the good part about the GPS is it does show that it knows where I am in Georgia and it knows what month it is there's a house finch there that's one I recently was working hard to identify I can do type and again we kind of get into our basic categories that most folks know about birds so there's our house finch I knew it was a bird that had a little bit of a red head to it okay that's it as a juvenile so if I do see and the big, the big thing about this is if I do see uh, kind of a gray bird hold on thing get away from me so here's the main bird, of course. There's the main male, it says. And the big thing about this is it's the one that has the red um, head. <laughs> it's a red head, okay? And the, but the other thing is that the one that, it, if we go to the next part, we can actually see that there's a juvenile, all right? 
and it does not have a red head at all. So if we do see the red headed one and there's some other birds around that one, we know their house finch is two. Hey Rachel, welcome, welcome. Glad that y'all are here. I'll say welcome Rachel and crew. How about that? I would tell you, uh, some folks have had some issues where uh, YouTube keeps uh, like freezing or the screen goes black all of a sudden. So um, I'm not sure what that is. Just have to keep trying. Apparently, they are having some issues. But I'm very glad that y'all are here. Okay, so if you do look outside, like you're feeding birds or something, and you see a bird that's like this, and then if you look at your Audubon app, or any other kind of app and you notice, you know what? I can't believe it, but it looks like this bird um, has other birds around that look similar. They have the same silhouette, okay? But you're not sure what kind of bird they are. They might be the same bird, but different age groups. So you really have to look at a um, app or look at a really good detailed uh, birding, uh, uh, I'm blanking on it, guidebook, okay? So I believe in a second, so the scroll down, it talks about the description of the birds, the song calls of the birds, and I should play one, and hopefully y'all can hear it. Let me make sure that that is actually on. And it also lists the range as well, okay? So there's your range. Talks about the migration. It has discussions about the birds, their habitat, what kind of habitat do they like. Now, this, these are birds that I am seeing in my backyard here, um, you know, in Evans, Georgia. Talks about what kind of diet they like. Here's a big one right here, trying to mostly seeds is what they like. I'll tell you what kind of bird seed I'm putting out. Uh, is to give you a big clue about who I'm getting. Berries, all kinds of stuff. Talks about their nesting. And it also talks about their eggs too, a pale blue egg. With some lavender dots it says. See, I told you the video was worth me finding it. <laughs> I just had to find it. Okay, I think the next part is that I'm actually searching for a bird that I do know the name of, okay, which is a mockingbird. A big one that we talk about in class, and these are birds we usually see around the Columbia County Library in Evans, um, are the mockingbirds. One hard way to identify a bird is through its bird call. It's very difficult, and one of the reasons is because there's so many different kinds, and the mockingbird does not help out, okay. What does a mockingbird do? And I actually have a mockingbird video to show you in a second. Mockingbird do basically comes up as similar to what its name is. I love the flying because you can usually tell what a mo it's a mockingbird because of the, uh, the white pattern on the wings. But they make lots of different noises trying to mimic other birds. So it's about to play that. We talk about its range, most of the southern United States, habitat, what kind of fur, um, food does it like. Now this is interesting. So my bird feeder, I'm trying to focus on a certain type of feed with seeds and I'm not really getting any bird, um, mockingbirds, okay? Mostly it says they like insects, okay? perch areas, shrubs and trees, and they like berries. So unless you're going to put out some something that includes suet or berries, you're probably not going to see any of the uh, 
you know, mockingbirds. Let's see what else in here. Caterpillars kind of stuff, unless they're in your area. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. I'm glad I was able to find that so quickly. <laughs> ah, okay, so Mr. Bald Eagle. Yes, I'm here, Mr. Bald Eagle. Very good presentation. Now let's start showing some videos that are interesting about backyard birding. Yes, sir, we will. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we're actually going to flip over to our backyard birding and I'll disappear for a second <laughs> alright so we have our backyard birding now before we start I'm actually going to show our birding videos here So let's talk about doing some of our bird calls and we'll talk about our mockingbird sings. And basically these are videos that I found on YouTube. And this one is basically showing the different uh, backyard um, birds, you know, for singing. One of the things I really like about this video is you can see the birds singing. I think that one's really pretty with the, the blue hair. <laughs> There's our wren.
Did you like that? Okay, so that was a video I found on YouTube called 15 Birds and Bird Songs for Beginners. And let's see, I want to go ahead and show, let's see, Northern Mockingbird. So this is the Northern Mockingbird, which I'm going to show a video about them being on the news and a bit of a nuisance downtown. I'm not going to show all this, just some of it, so you can hear the Mockingbird um, seem sing too. <laughs> has so many different calls that he does. That he does. make lots of noise don't they <laughs> oh hang on I'm gonna show those that in just a second so the really interesting part and to kind of to go into that there's actually a group uh, that have had some issues with uh, some birds here in Augusta at the Peabody apartment so I'm actually going to show that and they're mockingbirds and they have gotten kind of aggressive so this is kind of one of my fun videos. Enjoy. Well, they say something is quite foul at an Augusta apartment complex, and residents are pointing the finger at a couple of dive bombing birds. The birds are being called scary, even intimidating, and it may even be a case of full-fledged bird bullying. Is it true or just a flight of fancy? Out there somewhere with George Escalo. Peaceful Peabody Apartments, all is fine here, they say, except for the Mockingbirds. They're horrible. They, they hang out like over there on the wires, and they come back over here, and they're all over the patios, and it's just ugly. Wow, what unflattering comments about our feathered friends. What did they do? Every time we, we walk in that area, uh, the bird attacks me on my back or either on my shoulder. Wait, you're saying one minute you're walking the dog and the next thing you know you've got a bird dive bombing you? Get you on the back and he'll swoop down on your dog. They say the attacking mockingbird's turf is around this magnolia tree. Have you been dive bombed? Yeah, one time I had to just go get these to them off. You have not been dive bombed by you go on over there and see whether they'll dive bomb you. You think they find out we in the next week lot of work. Make make a move. So we walked by the tree. And there he was, the bully bird of Peabody Apartments. <laughs> but residents say the aerial assaults are really not uncommon for mockingbirds. They will attack you if you get too close to the nest <laughs> or if one of the bears have fell out the nest and are walking around, they will attack. Nest protecting mockingbird. Just be careful, he's on the move. Out there somewhere in Augusta, George me. Escola, WJBF News Channel 6. Yeah. <laughs> he's spotting George. Yeah, I hope he's okay. <laughs> That's our report for now. <laughs> it's a great. 
I like the video because uh, not only is it surprising about the mockingbirds, but he doesn't believe it, and then he, he experiences it for himself, which is uh, pretty funny. Okay, so let's talk about some distinctive calls uh, with owls, okay? Uh, so we may not actually hear an owl except for maybe its call. So have you ever seen an owl outside? I mean, at night or anything, swooping down? You might, you might see a bird swooping down very quickly and then at night all of a sudden it's right there in the front yard you won't hear the owl except for its, its screeching and i've experienced that myself where we I lived in a house at a big bay window and all of a sudden sometimes at night you see this big bird just laying in the front yard and you're just like whoosh and uh you then you would sometimes hear the the owl calls uh outside at night so let's go ahead and i want to play that And again, this is a video found on YouTube. I do have to turn the microphone back on. That video is called The Distinctive Calls of Owls, uh, a sampler. Okay, so you may have heard an owl and not even known <laughs> that that was an owl, but if you did see it, uh, you know, it's unmistakable. Okay, so the next one I have is I actually have another video. This was actually a few years ago and it was during uh, St. Patty's Day. So uh, he actually is, is talking about what their favorite color is, but basically what happened was, uh, come to find out, there actually was a bluebird, mountain bluebird, that showed up at the Augusta Airport, which was actually really surprising because it's not really their, their area or their domain. So that's what they really talk about uh, in this video, okay? So enjoy. And I'll disappear to you. The preps for St. Patrick's Day are well underway, but out by the Augusta Airport, they're not thinking green. I was thinking blue. Absolutely. Absolutely. And green I'll be thinking tomorrow. No, we weren't. We were thinking blue. <laughs> and you saw it? Yeah, we did. And what they saw was a bluebird. It's nice that it's a nice, beautiful male bluebird so it's he's a it's a gorgeous bird and for these parts a real rare bluebird i don't think anyone expected this it's it's quite a um a treasure to see these birds the treasure is a mountain bluebird and bird watchers from all over georgia from woodstock to dawsonville grab their birding gear to get a look. My understanding is this is the first one in Georgia. Oh, recorded anyway. That's right. The first official sighting of a mountain bluebird in the Peach State. That can fire up the feathers of a bird watcher. We only came three and a half hours. Your wife said you had to go? <laughs> yes. 
Was it worth it? Yes, it is. It was easy to get. All right, the mountain bluebird isn't very big. It has wings, and a sighting of one has never been recorded in the state of Georgia. And people saw it. Talk about luck. Was it so, worth the trip? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. You had the luck of the Irish. Absolutely. <laughs> All the luck of the Irish. Aaron Go Bluebird out there somewhere in Augusta, Georgia, Escola, WJBF, News Channel 6. <laughs> and that's on the WJBF uh, News Channel 6's website, too. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk, start talking about our backyard. And I have a few other videos that I've shot as well. And I have an extra new video that I'm actually going to show at the end. So these are some pictures that I've actually taken in my yard or different family members' yards. So if we look at our, our bird feeder here, so let me ask the question is, uh, do you have a bird feeder? Okay, what kind of bird feeder do you have? And if you're not having any luck or if you're not happy, I'm going to throw in some tips about um, bird feeding in the backyard where our backyard birds and kind of what birds to expect, uh, you know, in Evans and stuff. Um, so here's a bird feeder here and it actually stand, has a, its own post that it stands on and here you can see a little chickadee and what bird is this it has a little red head on top there you go it's a house finch now I didn't take these pictures uh, of the blue jays so here's one this is actually the top of uh, this thing that's holding the light the um, bird feeder up and all of a sudden one day looking outside now one thing that's really neat about the bird feeders you can actually have them close to a window and then you know what it's an activity to see the birds um, eating at the bird feeder and what birds come to the window so I basically encourage anybody to basically have this it's fun for all ages it's fun to look outside to see what birds are flying in it's a great conversation uh, to talk to anybody about. It's educational. It's fun. Uh, so basically one day had a bunch of blue jays fly in. First there was one. There's like a um, dove or a pigeon there. And then we actually had other blue jays flying in. And then all of a sudden, and I'll tell you this, one thing that blue jays will do, and some people don't like them, they're bigger than a lot of the birds that we have in our yard, but they will actually make a fake hawk noise. Yes, blue jays, before they get to a bird feeder or whatever, can make a fake hawk noise and all the other birds will fly away thinking that there's a hawk about to fly down, okay? So one of those days heard a really, really loud noise, and I know this is blurry, heard a really, really loud noise and all of a sudden one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue jays, and it's funny because it took me a long time to find this, <laughs> this picture. I didn't take this one. Um, my fa I had a family member that did. And uh, about seven blue jays flew down at the bird feeder, made the loud noise, all the other birds flew away, and seven blue jays showed up at the same time. So that was an unbelievable picture, even though it's kind of blurry and stuff. Okay. Now, let's talk about feeding our birds. Let's talk about location. Okay. So a big thing is feeding the birds. What? Let me ask you this, um, and I hope I haven't lost anybody. I know YouTube's having problems where I have uh, had the video running in a separate uh, device or a phone, and it keeps cutting off on me. So I actually have to close the, the video and bring it back up to make sure that I'm still broadcasting. But it says my signal strength is great, but I've heard that they're having some kind of outage problems. But... These, this video will be up available later, okay? So not to worry. So the big thing is food, okay? What exactly are you feeding your birds? So if you're there, go ahead and just kind of answer my question, you know, what are you feeding your birds? Now, I actually had one of those mixes, and I'll be honest, I kind of went for the cheapest bag of, of food that I could get, okay? I was at the store, 
it just basically said general bird seed and then I basically wanted I wasn't having a ton of luck I was having some luck uh, with the birds but I wasn't having the kind of luck that I wanted so one of the things I did was I actually had my bird feeder uh, I had one bird feeder and it was basically right next to the house because there was a, um, a pole there basically okay good Rachel and Cruz say yes we have a small one but we're planning on so oh man the squirrels the squirrels squirrels do not eat the seed we like squirrels but not to feed I will tell you something funny about the squirrels I recently watched a video and there are some um, this isn't me there are some bird feeders that believe that the squirrels you should basically put basically a, a squirrel feeder and what is that is basically you get a piece of dried corn and it's like a block and you hook it someplace else and the idea is that the squirrels go eat there now there's a funny one that you can get that actually looks like a picnic table that the squirrels will eat at I'm not going to feed the squirrels on purpose I want them to leave my bird feeder alone okay So I'm not real big on the birds and stuff. I mean, excuse me, I'm not real big on the squirrels. If the squirrels can't bother the, um, if the squirrels can't bother the birds and they get stuff off the ground, then we're friends, okay? So basically that's what I have going on right now. <laughs> okay, good idea. So uh, let me tell you what I have. And, oh, I didn't mean to click there. So basically, I wanted to be real specific about what birds I wanted to get, okay? I wanted more, you know, chickadees. I wanted um, blue jays is what I wanted. I also, but my main thing was I wanted cardinals, okay? I wanted cardinals, um, red uh, cardinals to show up. So I basically had heard the best thing to get and the best mix was to get uh, uh, black oil sunflowers seeds and they do have those in the mixes but I just got a flat out bag of black oil sunflower seeds and I have been very happy with that because I'm getting all the birds that I wanted um, maybe they're not because maybe the other bird feeders they'd come in and pick out the seeds or whatever they wanted and then they would you know like uh, and leave now the big thing is you got to make sure that you're plentiful with your food and also clean out your bird feeder um, you know every once in a while maybe once a month go dump it don't really have to go wash it unless you see something you know is gross about it uh, the feeders a really big one is um, you want to make sure that it's kind of in a covered area and what I mean by that is think about two human steps away from a tree okay so if you can put uh, uh, for squirrels it's a really bad idea to have um, here I'm using I'm using my hands talking y'all can't see me so one of the things is basically don't have your bird feeder near like a fence or anything um, there's a really fun video on YouTube of this guy um, it came out about a month or so ago and he actually um, puts these squirrels through this um, American ninja style uh, warrior obstacle course to get to really nice uh, food and um, they accomplished that goal okay because they get really really great so one of the things is don't have it near anything that a squirrel could climb and jump down onto the bird feeder okay so you need to have it far enough away from maybe the the tree um, uh, the I don't know the body of the tree the body of the tree so if a squirrel did jump up there they can't leap but it still have um, the limbs near the tree so the bird could eat a little bit fly back underneath the tree for cover from predators or any other kind of animals they really like that just having a bird feeder out in the middle of a um, pasture they don't like that they want to be near like a little tree another thing is it needs to be near water so either you need to be giving the bird feeder water I'm very lucky in the back of my house has a nice little stream so I don't have to feed those birds because there's a little stream about uh, five feet away from the bird feeder uh, but uh, that means they can go get water so they eat a little bit 
and then they'll fly down there in the stream. I can see them disappear, and then they'll come back, eat a little, and then if they sense something, they'll go jumping um, into the tree, and then they'll come back. So it's really important to make sure that they do have some cover for protection. It's not so close that a squirrel could climb it, and the other the location is, you know, near shrubs protection or anything like that. Now, let me tell you what I got for my bird feeder. Um, of course, now I'm blanking on what the name of it is. Uh, hang on a second. Oh, I did just find the school the squirrel obstacle course one, but that's not what I want to show you. So basically this is similar to what I got. So I was having some squirrels and it, I think it was probably uh, the, this one, I think. So yes, go, go, go. Okay, just go right now. Thank you. It actually was at Lowe's, so this is the one I got. So it's not a, it, it's, it's, it's just a metal part here. This may not be the one I got, let's see. Okay, this is this is it, okay, this is the one. Um, a lot of places online, and I've had folks in, the other, in other classes too that they go, I wanted to get some kind of anti-squirrel stuff, but it really was expensive. This is one I got in Evans um, Lowe's. It was $15, and this is kind of the setup that I actually have. I'm going to stop hovering there so it's not doing that. Um, on the left, I have what's known as a house-type bird feeder. Um, my cardinals, I, I, the one on the, the one, I'm going to say the one on the right, the red one, is similar to what I got, kind of a tall one, but I've actually had some issues where the, the cardinals couldn't stand on it for long and it's like they would eat the seeds off the ground but then they weren't perching so then i got uh, actually found an old house one that i had a while so it kind of has a a, a a wider bottom on it and it actually does hold more seeds and i put that one on the left side okay so i have a pole like this and if i hover over it it moves it around so i'm not going to i'm not going to do that <laughs> i'm pointing at it but you can't see me point at it but anyway um, basically I got a pole and I think it was like $15 at one of the stores. It's very similar to this. And then pretty quickly had a squirrel climb up the pole. And I went, I got to come up with something. And I had researched about the, the bell things and they actually call them a baffle. My brain wants to call them a bell, but this one is not plastic. I've seen some people's that they'll post and either they're trying to use a pie plate and I've used a pie plate in the past but if it's too light the squirrel will just move it out of the way this is actually has a little bit of heft to it okay um, the bottom part of it and let's see if they can get a different picture I'm not actually using this this part here okay it actually has the hole here and uh, uh, below that it has a metal part that you actually clamp onto the pole and then this sits here and it, it just kind of sits okay so I'm basically having squirrels climb up the pole and they get here and then they can't see um, the they can't see any place else so then they stand and then they start sliding back down the pole again and then they start working on the ground now I've had one where there's a nearby uh, shrub plant that kind of had a long stalk and it climbed up that and then looked around and then it kind of fell back down again and I was but I'll tell you I feel like I haven't stopped them I've just slowed them down because eventually they're going to figure out some way to get on there but one of the things when I first had it the first few days I would actually hear a, a bell noise like knock and when I'm inside and they would actually hit this thing and it would move around and scare them okay nothing hurting them they can't climb on the bell because it's moving around. So this is actually the, the excuse me the baffle. It's moving around. It's all metal. It's not something plastic they can chew up. So this is the one I recommend. 
I haven't had any squirrels that I know of successfully get to my bird feeder. So the so we're friends. The squirrels come in, they eat the food off the ground, they get them some seeds, they're hanging out with the other birds, you know, and everything's fine. It's it's like, you know, a little a little garden area and I'm I'm going to show you some videos here in just a second. So this is what I recommend. This is kind of the setup I recommend. But remember, have it so it can be shaded, so the birds feel safe going in and out. Um, of course, I have seen ones that are more in a field, just absolutely full of birds. But supposedly, they, they will get more birds if they feel like they're a little bit safe. Um, get a little food and go back underneath safety. And of course, water, water, water. They want water nearby so they can drink water or even bathe in the water too. Okay. Now... Yeah, this is like the Yeah, this is like the exact bird feeder I have. And it says it's squirrel proof or whatever. I still had a squirrel climb on it. But the idea is that if if a squirrel grabbed the sides, the metal part slides down. I don't know. The baffle has been the best thing that I found um, to do anything. So but you will you will go some places and it, it so they'll like charge really expensive prices for stuff and you go it's just a piece of metal so the Lowe's one that's where I got it in Evans oh it says it's an exclusive I've even seen ones that were similar to this online that were like $45 okay so that's the one I definitely recommend having the water location your food so let's talk about our food some more and I'll disappear so this is the exact food that I had it's a Wagner's um, I'll actually have it auto, auto subscribe shipped to the house. Uh, the big ones that, of course, I wanted was what? I wanted cardinals is what I wanted, okay? So the black oil sunflower seeds, if you look at that, all the way across all of the birds, the woodpeckers, the titmouse, the nuthatch, the finches, house finches, Grosbeak, the Blue Jays, and I didn't have Blue Jays for a long time. I don't know why. Get So I get a lot of chickadees. And I don't get any goldfinches, though. I wish I was getting that. And uh, But it says all of them like that. So actually, this is what I recommend. If these are the kind of birds that you want, I'm sure you'll get all kinds of different types. But again, the black oil sunflower seeds, I've actually had my best um, response and they love it. <laughs> they just keep coming back. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about that in just a second. Let me... Oh, any questions about that before I show a video? I would definitely recommend two feeders. Like I said, the, the tall one and then the house-like one. Let me see if I can show the house, house one I was talking about. Uh... House. Okay. house type bird feeder yeah something something kind of like you know this something there's even a cardinal sitting on it just so that it can actually have a eh, Yeah, just so that it have a lot more of a spacious area. Kind of like the house so like a cardinal can land here. Where apparently cardinals having some issues with the uh, the other one. This isn't exactly what I wanted to show you, but it's a good place to start. But yeah, just something that has kind of a wide area is kind of what I would recommend so that the bird can, can perch a little bit. Okay, so... Let me go ahead and show you. Now, here's a nice little video here. This was off YouTube as well. It's called Georgia Bird Watching. It's very short. So as you see, the birds have water. Okay. They have some water. They also do have two different kind of bird feeders, and there are baffles in there. One of their baffles is... is um, plastic again I recommend the metal one they're having a good time I 
and then you'll notice they'll hear something in a second. And, oh, they heard something and they all go fly off. And the squirrel, there was a squirrel there that flew off too. Uh, that video is called Georgia Bird Watching August 2015, and it's on YouTube. Now, let me show you. Now, these are two videos. Let's see. These are two videos that I shot, and I'm actually going to show you um, if I can pull it up, of course. Mm -hmm. It is an actual. Oh, no, no. I had a family member that had a, got a great video and it is on a loop. Here we go. This is from her hummingbird feeder and it's a, a hummingbird in a loop. So this is a hummingbird. Good. And it's on a loop. So that's working out. Isn't it cute? So advice about the hummingbird feeder I don't know had food in the hummingbird feeder and then no hummingbirds were showing up and then one day looked outside and there were um, two hummingbirds flying around in the yard and it was like okay well I guess it's time to get the hummingbird feeder and put it back out and try again and they are really excited I put it near where I saw the birds so as you see uh, they do come and land. Isn't that a great video? Uh, do come and land, and then they'll drink out of the the bird the bird feeder too. Uh, what's the difference between the mix and the pre-bought stuff? I'm not really sure. Uh, there's recipes online. Um, I don't know. I bought but the bought the bottle stuff, and he's they're they're coming and drinking it. So there you go. Bottle stuff's real easy. Just just buy it, put it in the fridge, or you can get the the um the mix and then mix it put it in the same bottle and just stick it in the fridge and when you fill it up and stuff it being so hot i've tried to keep it only about half full but as you see they've been drinking it like crazy okay so did you like that that's a new new video showing did you like that i hope so okay so these are two videos that i shot And the big one about this is that they are making a lot of noise. So I'll show you the cardinal first. And then I'm going to show you some of the backyard um, ones that I have too. Oh. Well, that only played once for some reason. Okay, so play it again. Okay, I didn't want to play it again. But hopefully you got to see that. This is one that is a grackle. This is on Tabby Island. <laughs> he's really loud and he's really proud to be uh, where he is too. Okay, now this is one bird watching on Jekyll Island. I didn't film this one. This one's on YouTube, and it does list the name of some of the birds. And then I've actually got some other videos I filmed um, in my yard of a bird fighting off a snake. <laughs> 
and also a bird eating a worm in the yard too. And this is my favorite, the Northern Cardinal right there. See, so that's kind of like a house feeder. So he has plenty, and that's the red one. Not that bird, but a, a uh, brown Cardinal is the female. This might actually be a female if it's unknown.
Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's talk about some of the pictures and I'll show you two videos. One where Thrasher decides to fight a snake in my yard. <laughs> um, yeah, the Thrasher did not like there was a snake in my yard and also a Cardinal uh, eating, getting a worm out of the ground. Okay, so let's talk about have, taking pictures of birds first and then we'll play that and we'll wrap class up. Um, so be ready, camera ready at all times. Have camera will travel. These are photos taken by my cousin, uh, so they're really great. Uh, he actually um, encouraged or came up with having these classes and I did because he was really big into birding with his Boy Scout merit badge. So got really into that and still into birding. So these are some pictures he took. A beautiful, beautiful uh, red cardinal right here. Of course, this is if it's red, it's the male. If it's brown, it's the female. You have to look at the silhouette of the bird. Okay. And there he is kind of walking through the bushes there. This didn't, it wasn't a fancy camera. It was just a camera that has a big lens on it. Okay. The best advice I can give you is take more pictures. Take a lot of pictures. Now here's our female, there's our female, female cardinal. So do remember, if you are having birds coming at your bird fear, you don't know what they are, maybe even looking in some of the, the, um, the books and you're trying to decide basically what kind of bird is this? Well, I'm not sure what kind of bird it is. Well, how many pictures do you have? Well, I only have two, okay? Or I just have one. So if I go here, and look at this so how many pictures do i have for the northern cardinal i have oh, let me see if i can hold it up there there we go i have one and it's only for the female okay so that is an issue and what's the issue about that is because the for the excuse me it's for the male only the male is red the other uh, bird is kind of brownish okay so that guy doesn't help me decide which is the female okay so that can actually happen now let's go ahead and let's uh, I have uh, another video to show you I'm gonna add an extra video on here and this is the video that I found I filmed in my backyard this chickadee's got a worm make sure <laughs> it sure does the volume turned off here so it is with a cell phone camera. So forgive me, I'm gonna to try to rewind and kind of do it fast and I'll play it again and do it kind of slow. But it's a cardinal in the yard. And if you look, he's pulling on a worm. He's pulling a worm out of the ground. Right there. You can see a little worm in his mouth, okay? And then he kind of jumps away, okay? But he got him a little worm. I can't zoom in. No, it won't let me zoom in. Can I zoom in anymore? No, that's as far as it goes. But right there, you can see the little worm in his mouth, and he pulls it. So they always talk about the early bird gets the worm. I believe this was in the afternoon. So, <laughs> But there just happened to be a worm in that area. So it kind of encouraged them, you know, to come back. Uh, to the area because they knew there was other things there to eat too. Okay, now let me show you and I, I'm going to make sure the sound's off. So basically I had a black snake in my yard and I, this was me just looking out the window and I'll play this twice, okay? The thrasher is having none of it. The thrasher wants the black snake out of here, okay? So the thrasher is making himself very large He's, he's, he's flailing himself. This, yes, this was my backyard. And how, how many times have I seen a snake in my yard? None. Except for this one time. And he's like, you, you get out of here. You got out of here, snake. I don't want you here, snake. And he's biting at him, and it's unbelievable. Get out of here, snake. And he scared the snake away. Okay. So I'm going to play it one more time. So he bites at his tail and he's like, hey, hey, 
I'm big. I'm big. I'm a thrasher. You get out of here. I don't like you here, snake. And it bothers the snake enough <laughs> that he's like, well, maybe I should get out of here. Get out of here. Wah, wah, get out of here, snake. Don't like you. Get out of here. Wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah. So you don't know what's going to happen in your, your yard. I also have another video. I, don't, I should load that one for next time. That honest, honest to goodness, I had a turtle uh, just walk through my yard. Uh, so I had all the birds, had all the birds out there and stuff. And then all of a sudden this tar turtle just start, walks across and there's the squirrels out there and everything else. So it's pretty interesting uh, to know what kind of life is going on uh, outside. Now, I do have one final video. We're going to come to a close. This is a video that actually came on this past Sunday on Sunday morning. And I'm going to play it basically uh, straight from YouTube. It's just six minutes long. I think it's pretty interesting, though. And then I'll wrap class up, okay? So this is from uh, Sunday Morning Show. And it's basically about one of the people that does bird illustrations, okay? So basically, he's someone that does uh, the illustrations for our bird books. And uh, I want you to really pay attention to the part that he talks about. Uh, one of the things that he's really interested in is he wants to see more about the birds sleeping, which is interesting because we don't really talk or know of really any, you know, exactly how all the birds sleep. And of course, but he's been drawing birds, it sounds like his whole life. So enjoy, and I'll come back and I'll wrap up class, okay? Bird watcher, writer, and artist David Sibley can tell us all about what it's like to be a bird. Before COVID settled in, Rita Braver set out to find out what it's like to be David Sibley. In the hedgerows and hayfields of Deerfield, Massachusetts. I'm hearing a lot of birds right now. David Allen Sibley can't help talking about the wonder of birds. They communicate with each other through sight and sound. Kind of like we and do. In the same way, yeah, the same way we do. So everything they do is accessible to us. And making birds accessible to us is the driving force of David Sibley's life. He sketches and paints everything from songbirds and swallows to penguins and puffins. This is the tufted puffin that's found in the Pacific. And this is called rhinoceros auklet, the rhinoceros oh. horn on its bill. We are talking thousands and thousands of bird pictures, each wing, each feather carefully crafted. You never said to yourself, I don't care if I ever draw another chickadee again. <laughs> No, I didn't. It's sort of like one foot in front of the other, just a faith in the process, like knitting or something else, where it's just, it becomes sort of routine. It has been a routine with a goal, to write and illustrate detailed field guides covering more than 800 species to help bird watchers properly identify what they are seeing. That just looks like a robin. Is, is that a robin? No, that's a, a black-headed grosbeak. First published in 2000. Each species arranged in a column, the brightest plumage at the bottom, the drabbest plumage at the top. The Sibley Guides to Birds have sold more than two million copies, and he's been called the most important illustrator of birds since John James Audubon or Roger Torrey Peterson. Previous field guides had fewer illustrations, so they, they left out a lot different ages, different subspecies. I wanted to illustrate every species in flight because that's what birders see. Just starting to build it right up there. Now 57, David Sibley learned to love birds by going out on hikes with his father, Fred, a noted ornithologist at Yale. As soon as the field guide came out or was in the works, yes, I, I became much 
much less well known. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of the bird people of North America. <laughs> I guess it's our family business. <laughs> it's an unusual family business, but it is the yeah. family business. David started drawing birds at age eight, and his parents didn't worry for an instant when their son dropped out of Cornell to pursue his passion and study birds in the field. His reason, uh, very valid, was that Cornell has a set track that you follow in your major, and that didn't leave time for looking at birds or painting birds. David Sibley would spend 14 years driving around the country, observing and sketching, always utterly fascinated by birds. I really like the shapes, the proportions, the smooth lines, each species so perfectly adapted to its own lifestyle. Along the way, he met his wife. Do you think you would have been happy with someone who wasn't as into birds as you are? No, I don't see how that could have worked. <laughs> Here comes maybe a goldfinch oh, yeah. coming across, the oh, little yeah. dot moving across the field. Yes, David Sibley's wife, Joan Walsh, is an ornithologist too. Take it down and try and see movement and then... Here comes the one right across. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There. oh, indigo bunting. Oh, sweet. And in 1988, it was she who really pushed him to fulfill his lifelong dream of writing a field guide. I said, you know, you can, you can keep talking about it or you can just say you're doing it. And so he did, and then um, he stood up and he fainted. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> David, did you we really a, faint? We were in a hot tub. We were in a hot tub. <laughs> he would spend years working on the guide. But when publishers saw it, they went wild. To walk into a room with a publisher and have them say, yes, we'll do it <laughs> in, in five minutes was... Uh, I guess a very unusual experience. In fact, Sibley's first volume hit the New York Times bestseller list. He followed it up with a series of other popular books about birds. And whether it's in his art or the delight that comes when he watches birds at his backyard feeder. A chipping sparrow, two chipping sparrows now. David Sibley says he's still learning about his favorite topic. What are some of the questions you're trying to answer? Can birds smell? Where do birds... Can they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can smell very well. Where do birds sleep? How do they hold on? Perch? They balance all sleep? night while they sleep. Are you just making this up? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all, it's all true. Indeed, his latest book is called What It's Like to Be a Bird. And who should know better than David Allen Sibley? Very nice, and that was from their uh, Sunday show this past week, actually. And I'll do a refresh on that. And it's available on their YouTube channel, The Sunday Morning Show. So we've actually kind of come to the end of our class. Oh, no, I like talking about birds, too. It's a lot of fun. And Mr. Bald Eagle enjoyed it, too. I think it was a very good class. I really enjoyed it. All the videos and stuff as well and i hope that everyone out there is looking for my fine feathered friends and family and saying hello and putting out lots of bird seeds so they'll be they'll eat a lot okay well there you go well thank you mr bald eagle i'm very glad that you're here with me today uh so come to in any other questions and i encourage you to of course if you don't have one get a bird feeder you know Try some of the uh, the tips I gave. As I try to type and talk at the same time. There we go. Try any kind of tips I gave and stuff, you know, and let me know in future classes and stop by future birding classes. And if you want to share videos and stuff like that, um, it'd be good to share pictures and stuff like that too. It'd be cool to, um, to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about some of our upcoming classes. Oh, Mac, you're welcome. Great for you to be here.
So tomorrow we're doing a double um, library resources and apps class. So we're going to be doing the class at 11 o'clock and then we're going to be doing the class at 2.30. Okay. Uh, so definitely like and subscribe to our, our uh, GCHRL videos channel. And also I will be posting links on the Grovetown Library website and also the Columbia County uh, Library uh, website, Facebook as well. Okay. Lots of great information we're going to cover tomorrow. Now, another thing to know is here's our schedule for the rest of the month. Um, lots of great stuff. A new class that we're going to have next week start up. Our, our new class uh, for yet for today was Scratch to Python, which that video is still up as well from this morning. And next week, we're, our, new, our new class is going to be Video Creating Basics. Okay, so come join me for that. And then at the end of the month, we're actually going to be doing our Gadget Help um, 2 morning and afternoon. Uh, back to back so you can attend either one of them live one is at 11 o'clock and one's at 2 30. Uh, a little bit of a side note our libraries are open including our new Grovetown library yay uh, it is open with limited services and hours curbside holds pickup is available you can go to gchrl.org for details or call the library monday through friday 10 a.m to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates and also like my videos and like the other librarians videos too and story time and stuff and please share with friends or family members. Um, they probably are going, hey, looking for something neat to do? Well, come, come and join me for a class. We're on the YouTube channel right now, but the easiest way to find our channel, of course, is subscribe to it, but just search GCHRL uh, videos and it'll pop right up so so glad that you guys were here for here with me today it's kind of a family activity doing the birding so I'm so glad to share this with you and to be able to talk about our our fine feathered friends and stuff <laughs> okay well bye mr. Eagle bye see you later goodbye everybody <laughs> all right he had to go I'm sorry he had to walk a little early so I will wish everybody Adieu, stay safe, don't forget to go out and get exercise, um, you know, check out some birds, do geocaching, do the Munzees, search for Munzees, go outside, have fun while our weather's uh, really nice and stuff. Um, don't know if it's going to start storming again, we'll see. And of course, winter will be here before we know it, okay? So enjoy the summer and have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>